Okay, good morning everyone. I'm Elise Redland Cook again from Vertical Measures and I'm here hosting Vertical Measures monthly webinar series. Today's webinar is titled Winning Tactics for Content Creation and Marketing and will be given by our president Arnie Ken. Before getting started, please allow me to take care of just a little bit of housekeeping. Today's webinar will be available for replay this afternoon, assuming there are no technical difficulties, of course. Arnie will be happy to answer your questions, so make sure to ask them in the chat applet located on your screen, and he'll get to them at the end of the webinar. Any that we don't get to, um, we will email you responses to. If you can hear me, but you can't see the PowerPoint slides, please attempt to reconnect. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Arnie, are you on the line? I'm here and I'm ready. Hi there. Good morning. Hi, Elise. How are you doing? Good. Okay, why don't you go ahead and get us started? All righty. Well, welcome, everybody, and thank you for uh, taking time out of your day to join me. Uh, as Elise mentioned, uh, I'm Arnie Ken, and I'm the president of Vertical Measures. And it's actually been a while since I've done a webinar, so hopefully it's a lot like uh, riding a bike. Well, let's get started. So the course of presentation today is uh, winning tactics for content creation and marketing. We could probably talk about this uh, all day. Uh, there's a lot to generating really good content and, and, and promoting it. Uh, I'm going to try to cover, I think it's about 20, 25 slides in the next uh, 40, 45 minutes, and then we'll have some questions and uh, wrap it up. So for those of you who uh, don't know me or aren't familiar with uh, Vertical Measures, uh, I've been actually doing internet marketing for about 12 years now uh, through various ventures that I've had in the past. Uh, we formed Vertical Measures about five years ago, and as uh, Elise mentioned, we're an internet marketing company. We're based in Phoenix, Arizona, and we're still waiting for the weather to cool down. Uh, we have about 80 clients uh, from all around the world where we do uh, SEO, link building, content, and social media marketing. Oh, and by the way, if you're happening to uh, feel the need to tweet, uh, my Twitter ID is Arnie K, so at Arnie K. Uh, vertical Measures happens to be at Vertical Measure. Uh, we couldn't get a uh, name with the S on it. There just weren't enough characters, but it's at Vertical Measure. And today we'll use the uh, hashtag pound content. Uh, so uh, that's on the bottom of each of the screens as I'm going through the presentation if you wanted to tweet out about anything, if I say anything clever or interesting. So anyway, your new realities. Uh, I usually present something like this in almost all of my presentations just to kind of uh, get people's attention. Um, and I'm assuming uh, most of the people on this particular webinar are interested uh, because they're business owners or they're webmasters or whatever, and they're interested in getting people to come to their website uh, generally through search. And uh, as I like to say, uh, when people do conduct searches online, there's only two possible outcomes. They're either going to find you or they're going to find their competitor. Of course, you want them to find you. Another truth or reality today is that search, search and social traffic can be so valuable it can sustain an entire business. Um, and in fact, it's very true for vertical measures. We do very, very little uh, uh, advertising at all. Uh, almost all of our uh, business comes either through word of mouth or through uh, search engine uh, traffic. And another thing that's a new reality, if you do have a website or a blog or wh whatever your presence is online, you really need to look at yourself as a publisher. In, in my opinion, you are now a publisher. And of course, content is the new marketing. We've been hearing for 15, 20 years, well, maybe since, since the very first written word, that content is king. And it's probably never been more true. And hopefully, I'll uh, explain why uh, in the next uh, uh, several minutes. And one thing that's definitely happening, uh, and you can probably see it every day uh, if you're really paying attention to what's happening online, but storytelling is now gaining the advantage online. And to kind of back up what I'm talking about, uh, this is some information provided by Christina Halverson, who's an excellent content strategist uh, out of, uh, I think, Minneapolis. She has a new book out, well, it's probably out, been out for about a year now, that uh, covers how to de develop a content strategy. But she did some research on what people are uh, searching for online. And if you notice these trends here, uh, of course, everybody thinks social media is hot, and it is hot, obviously. Uh, you know, uh, Facebook has almost come out of nowhere. Twitter's almost come out of nowhere in the last three or four years to be just huge, dominant players online. But you can see people, uh, uh, the returns when people search for social media. Um, and then you look at the second chunk of data here where it says content strategy. 
you'll see people searching for content strategy is just about a year behind the trend for social media. So in our opinion, of course, uh, content and content strategies is going to start to, to explode and be as dominant as uh, social media here in the next uh, couple of years. But one of the issues is that when you look at this uh, cluster of oh, job requirements or specialties or whatever you want to call it, um, there's lots of people dedicated to business issues, you know, account managers, project managers, uh, there's uh, people on the technology side, you know, designers, architects, usability study uh, specialists, I'm sorry, uh, programmers, so on and so forth. And then the, the, the three blue uh, areas that are circled are, are typically what's dedicated to the content. And what definitely has to happen now is that uh, these people, the web writers, web editors, content strategists, need to really get integrated into the entire marketing, IT, web, web process in order for them to really have the impact that you'd like to have on your website and for your business. So developing your content strategy. I think I only uh, you know, walked through this in about, oh, I think it's two slides, but a, a strategy can take months to develop. So I don't want to oversimplify uh, developing a content strategy here. But my first point here is that organizations, they're, they're just really now, and I think you know, maybe, maybe in the last year, but just really now beginning to understand that along with their products and services, uh, one of their core products is actually information. You know, I mean, I, you know, I've been in business for 20, 25 years. We're all really, really used to, uh, you know, creating brochures and, and selling our products and our services. And uh, what the Internet now is allowing is, uh, not allowing, but really probably the biggest impact is people go there to seek out information. In fact, when I got into the office this morning, I saw a tweet from somebody in our staff that I think 97% uh, of people searching are searching for information before they buy a product and those searches lead to a product purchase. So now companies need to decide that they're going to allow and promote information. So what you need to do, what you need to be thinking about is providing content that gives solutions to some of the toughest problems your customers are facing. And I'm sorry to just actually read these bullets, but some of them they're just they're worded just the way I want to say them. Um, the second bullet there is you need to also position yourself as a trusted solutions provider for your industry and help people spread the word. So you've got to, you're, you basically you start building trust with people that are thinking about your product line or your services or whatever it is that you're offering. You're, you might even be a, a nonprofit organization, but you still want people to find you. So you begin as their source of information, and gradually as they be, you know begin to trust you, uh, the, hopefully the visitor continues on and, and uses you as their source for the products and services. So steps to creating content, uh, excuse me just a minute, I'm going to grab a sip of water here. I'm going to cover uh, six different steps. First is, uh, as we've been doing as an SEO agency for our clients for a long time, you, pervo you perform keyword research, but for content you also need to perform some market research. And I'll, I'm going to cover that in just a second. You also want to identify the different types of content to be created that fit you. Identify where the content's going to be placed online, possibly even offline. Most of what I'm going to talk about, of course, is online. Uh, you want to brainstorm to come up with you know, really excellent, powerful ideas, and uh, then develop the plan for, to, for, to promote, <laughs> for promoting and marketing the content. And then, of course, create great content and do it continuously. This is not a one-time endeavor. So I'm not going to cover too much about keyword research. I don't, again, I don't really know the audience on the phone, but there's there's lots of tools out there. Uh, you know, Google offers a really great uh, free uh, keyword research tool. In fact, they just revamped it about a week ago, a uh, new version of it. That's for free. There's other uh, pay tools like uh, Word Tracker. That's an excellent tool. Um, but I think we're all probably familiar with the concept of doing keyword research. You know, uh, determining what it is that people are searching for when they have an intent to find the kind of products or services that you're offering. But something that uh, I'm going to cover here in, uh, in some detail is what is often missed, especially when thinking about content, and that's per, uh, conducting the kind of market research that helps you understand um, you know, where to target both search and social. So some of the things that we talk about and recommend are pretty simple. Uh, you can go into Twitter, uh, Yahoo, MSN, or Bing, uh, you know, whichever you choose. Uh, actually, even Google has a tool for this where you can check trending topics. 
I think on Google it's called Google Insight. Twitter has uh, trending topics. Uh, so you can go see what people are talking about right now and see what it might apply to your, your industry, your business, your services, and so on and so forth. Something else you can do is just go to answer sites. These have become very, very popular. There's, there's Yahoo Answers, and you can just search Yahoo for Yahoo Answers, and you'll find it. Uh, Facebook now has released a new uh, question and answer section on their site that's beginning to be really, really popular. Uh, or you can try LinkedIn. That's what the LI there stands for. LinkedIn has a whole commenting question answer uh, section there, and that's really good for those of you in the in the uh, business to business market, the B two B market. Uh, and also, there's Answers.com. You can try it. Uh, but you go there and and you can do searches and see what people are asking about in your industry, and then create content that answers those those questions. Uh, you know, uh, content based around uh, around what that seems like their issues or their problems might be. You can also go in, uh, to sites like Dig, uh, Stumbled Upon. Those are probably the two big popular ones, but also uh, Reddit and Mix. And then there's a lot of other niche sites. There's you know uh, financial sites, uh, sports sites uh, that basically allow you to vote up uh, popular content. And and you can go to those sites and see what is actually being voted on. You know what is what is popular on Dig or what is popular on Mix. Um, and that'll tell you, uh, you know, what what people are interested in. And, and again, you can do searches in your industry, your market, to see to see what people are engaging with. And then also uh, see what your competitors are doing that's working. Um, a lot of times for our link building efforts, we go back and we check uh, competing you know, our clients' competitors' backlinks. You know, who is linking to their uh, their competitors' sites, and what pages are they linking to? And there's tools that can help you do that. But that can tell you a whole lot. Um, if one of your competitors has a uh, white paper section on their website that is, you know, let's say the third most popular link to page on their entire website, you know, generally the home page is the most popular page that has the most links to it. But now, if you start looking at internal pages and you find out that this whole white paper section is gaining, you know, lots of links, it has lots of traffic. Well, that should give you the clue that in your industry, that's what people want. And so maybe you could develop and roll out a better white paper or information section on your website. And so basically, the, the, the last bullet here kind of says it all, though. Um, your content, it must pass the keyword or the engagement test. You know, it's either got to be engaging or really uh, uh, right spot on with keywords, or it's just probably not going to work. It's got to be one of those two things have to really be in place. So the second piece of, or second step, is to identify the types of content that, that might need to be created for your site or, or, or your social sites or wherever. Um, and so the research that I just uh, kind of stepped through there uh, determines probably the types of content uh, that your audience you know, likes and, and is willing to consume. You know, I gave you the, the white paper example, which happens to be the last one listed here. But there's other things, of course, like blogs and, and just really nice, efficient, consistent blog posting. You could do case studies. Uh, you could add a forum, a uh, community forum, to your website where people can participate and ask questions and get answers from other forum members. Uh, contests are, are, can be really strong and, and are gaining in popularity. Ebooks, e-newsletters. I think everybody here, uh, you know, everybody's familiar with, you know, emailing out a newsletter, uh, whatever, on a weekly or a monthly or a quarterly basis. Uh, infographics are becoming quite popular, and I'm going to talk about that you know, in a few minutes. Uh, interviews, online quizzes, podcasts, videos, webinars, just like this one, uh, and I think I have a section that covers this. I don't uh, quite remember, but uh, you know, webinars create content. Uh, just I think people have already asked us. It's going to be made available later, and you bet we're going to post it on our site. We'll post it on, on SlideShare and a few other places, the video sites, uh, and it becomes content. Then I've already talked about the example of white papers, but I think right there are 13 different ideas and different types of content that can be created. So then you want to think about before you start really creating this content, uh, where are you going to put this content? You know, is it going to be on your blog? Uh, will you allow or have RSS feeds? And and for I'll give you one example of not thinking ahead. When we set up our well, we've had our blog for years, but about two years ago, uh, I made the decision to have our RSS feed RSS feed uh, just cover the uh, a summary of each of our posts. And uh, that we went merrily along like that for quite a while, and then uh, the Kindle came out. It became quite popular, and uh, if you have a blog, you can actually submit it to Amazon's Kindle program, 
And if they like it well enough, they'll accept it, and uh, people can access your blog through the Kindle, and they actually have to pay a 99 cent uh, per month fee for that. That's uh, Microsoft, or I'm sorry, Amazon's piece for, for providing the technology. So I did it. You know, we set us up uh, uh, the Kindle uh, an account, and our blog got accepted, and it rolled out, and uh, we got you know two or three subscribers in the first month, and I saw one of them rated us a one out of five stars. And I went in to check what his complaint was, and it turns out, because we had set up the RSS feed with just summaries, all they were getting on the Kindle was a two-sentence summary or whatever it was of each of our posts, not the full text. So we had to go back in and, of course, change it so that our RSS feed was providing the full text. That long story is just to say, if that's why you need to think about these things ahead of time, where is your content going to be placed and how is it going to be distributed? Again, uh, di speaking of distributed, uh, you know, are you going to post these to social accounts? Are they going to hit your Facebook account or, or any other accounts, LinkedIn or whatever you might have out there? Are you going to attempt to get uh, some of these in Google or Yahoo or MSN news feed? That needs to be thought through because there's an entire uh, acceptance and strategy, uh, you know, acceptance by Google and, and some of the, the news feeds, and then strategy on how you do your, your URLs and so on and so forth if you're going to do news feeds. Um, will you be placing, uh, identifying and placing uh, your video image, slides, press releases, and so forth on other websites? Or uh, the whatever that is, the fifth bullet, will you need to set up specific web pages to handle videos or images or slides or press on your own website? Um, and will you have any content to download? Uh, going back to that white paper example, um, if you're going to maybe create a series of five white papers, uh, will people be downloading these as PDFs and, if, PDFs? and if they are, you know, have you provided the correct technology for that? Um, are you going to ask them for their name and an email address before they can get the white paper and so on and so forth? So you need to, to think about and strategize um, how it is you're going to place the content online. Then number four, uh, brainstorm for powerful ideas. Um, I don't know if this is the easiest or the hardest part of this entire process. Um, we spend a lot of time here in, in small or large groups uh, brainstorming uh, ideas for ourselves and for our clients. Um, you know, of course, you want to be thinking about uh, having the highest viral potential. Uh, uh, you know, you do want, you know, obviously you're doing all of this because you want to attract visitors to the content wherever it might reside. Um, and the reason I say the uh, mentioned this might be the hardest part is what tends to happen. And I'm just I'm just sending this out as a cautionary note. What tends to happen when we start to do some brainstorming is you can just imagine we all throw out ideas. You know, people really like two or three ideas. The group gets worked up. They get all excited. We share it with the client. Everybody's enthusiastic, and that's kind of the nature of doing things as a group. And you know, you start to almost uh, envision this whole self-fulfilling uh, viral thing. But the reality is, it's very, very few things are uh, the next Old Spice or the next Will It Blend. Uh, or any of these other popular uh, things that you've seen on YouTube or shared in emails or whatever, uh, those things, uh, you, you almost can't force that kind of viral success. You know, I'm talking about viral su success, meaning you know, 100,000 or a million views of some, some content, some video or whatever. We just try to be, re when we're doing it, we just try to keep in mind that what we're trying to do is something on a very consistent, um, you know, if, if we get thousands of views, uh, that, that's good. If we get tens of thousands of views, we're, we consider it a hit. And if you can do that over and over again, you've got a very successful campaign. So anyway, and then you, you, know, you want to think about things that are easy to share. Um, will it drive user-generated content, UGC? You hear that a lot. Um, and and, and user-generated content, you know, you just might not even think about it, but all of us provide it probably every day. Anytime you vote for something or comment or give a review, uh, participate in a forum, uh, all of that is creating content for that website. And so if in your strat um, and in fact, I, I saw a stat somewhere, and I, I really, really have been saying this for a couple of months. I need to go back and find and find out. Uh, who to reference for it, but I'm pretty sure the stat was that 25% of all links on the web point to user-generated content, which really kind of astonished me. But then I think thought about it, and you know, peop a lot of times when you do a search, you wind up at a forum. 
you know, maybe you're trying to figure out how to fix your, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something for your car. Uh, you know, window broke, so you're trying to find, you know, repair your own window, and you wind up at a car forum where people are explaining how to make that repair. Um, and that's user generated content. Or somebody wrote an awesome review on a product, and there's links pointing towards that review. So user generated content can be uh, very valuable if you can figure out a nice way to uh, uh, generate it on your website. When you're producing traditional content, you know articles, you know generally written content, or, or I suppose video or podcast as well, um, you want to try to do your best to add real value to the reader or the viewer. Uh, it needs to be unique. You can't just be a, a, a me too for kind of a person, but be unique. Make it informative or entertaining. Be sure that it's relevant. Uh, those factors really matter, and consumers they they can sniff out uh, bad content and they just ignore it and they they move on. So what buyers are looking for these days, though, uh, is content that makes them smarter and more knowledgeable. And in my opinion, businesses that provide that content are going to win. So number four, uh, developing a plan for promoting the content. Uh, that's probably one of our strengths here. We're pretty darn good at marketing things. Um, and what's really helped us here in the last two or three years, you know, there's this stuff that literally wasn't available two years ago uh, is now mainstream uh, on, the, on, on, the, on the net and it, within our business and lots of agencies out there, and basically it's, it's it, uh, how social media has really taken hold, um, and it's just as it says here, uh, become a critical aspect of online publishing. It's it's a free, in essence, free way to get the word out um, if you uh, have time. Uh, that's that's the the part that gets missed a lot um, with social media is even though you aren't paying for your Facebook or Twitter, uh, you it, you know your time matters, and so uh, you know the reason we're in business is people outsource that to us because one hopefully we have the expertise and know how to do it but also it's our business we have the time and uh, you are all running your businesses whatever they might be and you need to focus on that you can't sit you know for 10 hours a day uh, pushing out social media content um, and as I mentioned here you know getting this part right can literally be the difference between success and failure and I absolutely assure all of you that we have uh, gained business through Twitter and through Facebook and through LinkedIn, so it does actually work. Uh, and the second bullet says uh, the rewards of social success uh, can be uh, uh, immense, but if you do it wrong, it can also actually do real damage. Like I mentioned on the previous slide, consumers are pretty darn smart. Uh, whether they're you know business to business or business to consumer, whatever your market might be, people they they understand a phony. <laughs> they see you know when they see it, uh, sometimes that can blow up in your face. So you you want to be genuine. Uh, you want to understand who your customer is and where they are online. Throughout this, of course, I keep repeating the popular ones, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, but there might be other avenues where you need to be. Maybe you really need to be on MySpace. Um, uh, maybe Bebo is another one. And, and actually, we have some charts to show, you know, where uh, certain age brackets and certain genders participate online. And, and even though, you know, Facebook is huge, there are lots of other uh, niche market uh, uh, social media sites where that might be where your audience is hanging out and your competition might be less if you do a good job there uh, you can reach an audience a little bit easier um, and you want to develop uh, consistent relevant content in, in multiple channels we hit a lot of channels when we're, when we're doing marketing for folks I forgot this is a two-parter so uh, number five part two uh, one of the things we hear from people a lot is especially we work in a couple of industries that are regulated uh, schools are regulated uh, the insurance industry is, is a bit regulated uh, and I imagine mortgages will soon be regulated uh, but uh, they get worried about well I can't let these things be said online and uh, generally our rule of thumb is uh, it's a little bit too late to worry about that um, you just really need to let go of all control of what happens off of your website. Um, if you do a really good job of producing content, treating your customers right, so on and so forth, and let your 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 content, your ideas spread, um, things will take care of themselves. Because as the second bullet here says, content does become available to readers at any time, any place. You really, it's just too late. Uh, you really can't control it. Uh, but ideally, what you want then is people sharing your good ideas, hopefully linking back to your content. Hopefully that's on your website, but it almost doesn't matter as long as it's your content. And as I've already talked about, content's found through lots of different social media and search engines. You do need to make sure you optimize it. I'm going to cover that in a little bit. 
Uh, but now, you know, with in, with even on Google and the huge announcement yesterday with Yahoo, uh, Yahoo and and uh, embracing Facebook, um, now pretty much you know social media is being integrated into searches in, into the search engines. Google, Yahoo, or I'm sorry, I said Yahoo, but I meant Bing. Bing and Facebook uh, formed a relationship yesterday. Um, uh, so between Bing and Google, which now you know, what they, I think it's 95 percent of the U.S. search, and probably in most countries it's 90 or 95 percent. Um, now Twitter and Facebook results are going to be there, um, and then of course you have regular old social news sites like Dig and Reddit and Delicious. They aren't nearly as dominant as the search engines, but but they get huge amounts of traffic and can't be ignored. And then the last thing uh, is then go ahead and actually create this content. Uh, and I'm not going to take any time to go through this, but uh, if you don't know the Will It Blend story, uh, you might want to go to their website. They actually have a willitblend.com uh, website that explains a lot of it. Uh, these guys, uh, I would like to say they're geniuses, but I actually really know the VP of marketing there, and I know their story, and they uh, kind of stumbled into it, just like I had so it said back earlier in, in my presentation that you almost can't make this stuff happen. You just have to try to seize opportunities and hope for the best. And these guys seized an opportunity a few years ago when they blended an iPod, not an iPad, not an iPhone, but an iPod, and, and their video went uh, crazy online. Well, since then, they have blended lots of products. And in fact, people pay them now to blend products. Their property has become so popular. And I think it was Tuesday. In fact, I'll, I'll take two minutes to tell you, I spoke at uh, uh, Arizona State University uh, Monday night at the uh, uh, Cronkite uh, School of uh, Journalism, and uh, there was maybe 120 students and maybe 30 people from the general public there, and I told them two separate stories. I told this Will It Blend story, and I talked about the Old Spice uh, recent success, and the next day, uh, Will It Blend, and, and I did not know this was going to happen, but the next day, Will It Blend and Old Spice got together, created a viral video where Will It Blend blended a bottle of Old Spice. And it, of course, uh, I don't know how many views it has now. I, I think I saw it when it was a few thousand views because somebody from that evening's uh, talk sent it to me and says, oh, my gosh, did you see what came out today? So uh, anyway, my whole point there is uh, you start creating good content and good things can start to really happen. Will it bl uh, Blend Tech is the name of the company. You can kind of see it in the background there. Their sales went up 600% in the first year after they started to produce these videos. And that was, the, that was their marketing expense, producing the videos. So now I'm going to step through. Uh, I'm running maybe just a little bit behind, so I'm going to have to step through these a little bit quickly. But... Um, uh, to my preamble, my pre-mumble for these next few slides is that uh, all of these uh, examples I'm going to show you are from small to medium businesses. So this isn't, you know, Ford or Coca-Cola who have, you know, big budgets and can produce some stuff like this or, or Old Spice. Um, and all of these uh, uh, attracted a decent amount of traffic and at least 100 links to the content, 100 or more links. And all of the uh, following examples cost just hundreds. I don't think anything costs more than $1,000 of actual out-of-pocket cash to produce. Of course, they do take time to produce. Um, but one thing is, uh, and I'm going to probably go simple to mo more complicated, but one thing that's still extremely popular, they've been popular for years, uh, probably popular since uh, pen and paper were created, uh, is lists. And this particular one is 15 blogs to follow if you want to kick butt online. Um, and uh, like I mentioned, it got at least 100 links, got some nice traffic, but lists really work no matter what industry you're in. The next thing, and we do a lot of this, we do, a, in fact, Elise, who did my intro and is going to be here for the Q&A portion, uh, does an interview series on our blog every Wednesday. We have an interview uh, with some leader in our industry in a certain niche. And this month, we're have, in fact, this month we're doing a content marketing and content strategist interviews. So if you go to our blog, there are some of the uh, industry experts uh, giving their views on, on content marketing and content strategies. Uh, this example here happens to be a, a blog called Search Engine People who interviewed me um, whenever that was back in March. Um, and the format can be pretty simple. You, you come up with the questions, you email them to the person you want to interview who's an you know, expert or someone known in your industry. They uh, almost always will, oh, wait, you know, you set this up ahead of time, but they will answer the questions, bring it back to you, you format it a little bit and post it on your site. Um, 
I, our success rate when we reach out to people and ask them if we can interview them, I bet you is 90%. We almost never get turned down because who doesn't want the, you know, the press, the, you know, free publicity and the links back to their site. It just takes, you know, maybe half an hour, an hour to answer those questions and there you go. Uh, contests, uh, people still love to win things. We all love to win. Uh, so contests done in a really uh, a creative way uh, can work very, very well. This is an example with Bombers. Image posts. Uh, these can actually be fast and easy. And this is actually, I have a personal blog. I, I don't keep it up too much anymore. Um, but I, I, I just decided to set up a blog so, uh, a few years ago so that I understood what bloggers go through and, and how, you know, how, you, how you handle a blog and how do you optimize it and you know, how do you post stuff to it and uh, what kind of spam comes in and so on and so forth. I just wanted to learn firsthand what, what bloggers go through. So a few years ago I set this up and uh, you know, gradually uh, I've had less and less and less time to, to mess with it. Uh, but one of the posts I did is I just happened to run across this picture of a parrot flower, and that's what you're looking at here. Hopefully you can all see this. Uh, and I just thought it was pretty unique, and it, it only grows in a certain part of Asia, and it only blooms uh, for a little while, and so on and so forth. So I quick went online, found, I don't know, I'll say three, four, maybe five pictures of this parrot flower, uh, put, posted them in, or pasted them into this post, wrote a summary of, you know, where you can find them, when they bloom, you know, you know whatever. Uh, you know, maybe a couple hundred words, and posted it, and forgot about it. And maybe a month or two months later, I was looking at Google Analytics for my blog, and saw that uh, you know a few weeks earlier I had had a huge spike in traffic. And it turns out somebody, and I didn't even submit it, but somebody else saw this post, submitted it to Stumbled Upon. It must have hit their front page, and in a two-day period, I had 12,000 unique visitors go to this simple little post that, honest to God, probably took me 20 minutes to put together. It drew a bunch of, as I mentioned, it drew at least 100 links to the website, um, and uh, it was as easy as that. Uh, infographics, they are really, really hot right now. Um, here's two examples, and again, I'm a little bit short on time, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on, on these. Uh, the top one was done by our buddies at Dream Systems Media. They happen to be here in, in uh, Arizona. And I just love the whole story behind this, and that's why I show it and get, be sure to give them credit. But uh, they had a client, I think they were in the guitar business, it's somehow in the music business, and uh, they did this infographic form. This was a little bit, uh, maybe a couple years ago. And it became so popular on their website that people were emailing them asking if they could get this as a poster. So the company actually uh, got enough requests that they went out, turned it into a poster, and started selling it. So they actually produced an infographic that ended up, the, the, the content became profitable for them. Um, and down below uh, is a, a client of ours, um, and uh, we didn't do all of these infographics, just so you know, we've, we've done a few of them, but um, they've gone all out with infographics. I think they might have 50 or 60 of them on their website. They actually have a page now where they have this library of infographics that you can go to. And if you want to add one of these infographics to your, you know, financial-related website, you can uh, download the code right from there, post this infographic onto your website. But the cool thing is, is if you do that, part of your agreement is you leave that code in place, and it has a link in it back to our client's website. And these start to spread. So not only are they getting links to the infographics on their site, but their infographics are starting to spread uh, virally across the net. And as uh, I'm talking right now, we're creating a webinar. Uh, I think almost every industry can do exactly the same thing. We're, I'm putting out hopefully what you're considering valuable information. We're recording it. We're going to download it. We're going to post it on some sites. We're going to post it on our own site. Um, hopefully, if you really like it, maybe you'll write a story about it. You'll link to it. We'll see that. If we like what you said, we might link back to you and so on and so forth. Um, but this can happen in almost any industry. Um, I happen to do a lot of hiking, and so I'm familiar with REI's uh, website. Uh, REI has lots of webinars. I mean, I think they have webinars on how to how to uh, uh, shop for a hiking boot, uh, and they you know they put on a 30 minute webinar on how to you know what you know waterproofing, ankle high, low cut, so on and so forth. And they've got all kinds of stuff, you know, fishing gear, backpack, whatever. Um, almost any industry can educate their prospective consumers uh, using webinars. And we can show you how to set these up if you like. They're not, they're not that hard. 
videos, as I just said, uh, videos aren't as hard as you think either. Uh, I'm not going to launch any of these, uh, but I'm going to quickly describe all three of these. The top one on the left is a guy who works here, Michael Schwartz. Um, he and our staff came up with this idea. We, we hire uh, interns from a couple of the local colleges. So we have an intern program here, and uh, we decided the easiest way to tell them about us and why they might want to choose vertical measures for their internship was through a video. So uh, I think uh, half of the office participated. I don't know how many man hours went into this, but it all got done in an afternoon. Shot what looks like about a 2 minute and 16 second video, put it on our website, and it has really helped. And it, it was funny. It was uh, allowed our staff to do something different for you know a couple of hours that day. Um, and it's really helped our intern program attract interns. The one on the top right there, racing uh, for the top link, uh, the same guy, Michael, and, and somebody else here in our office, James, uh, every month we have a little contest to see who gets the best link for one of our clients. And it turned out this particular month uh, there was just a tie. We couldn't decide whether Michael or James had the best link. So one of them said, well, I'll race you for it. So they went out to uh, the parking lot here, and somebody else in our office, because we're always thinking content, said, we're going to film it. And went out to the parking lot and filmed this foot race. Uh, and it's two minutes long. And it was really funny. And we just turned it into a blog post. So instantly we had some nice content related to link building and so on and so forth. Just that quick. And we just used these little handheld uh, foot video cameras. Down below is a story I often tell in these kinds of presentations. Uh, because a lot of people say, "Well, I don't even know what what would I do? You know, what what, what you know? I, I'm a I'm an e-commerce site. I sell products, uh, uh, boring products. Well, uh, I have a Samsung. I don't know what model it is. Uh, DLP television, and uh, DLP means you have this light bulb that is, uh, uh, goes against this uh, color wheel, mirror wheel that anyway displays the image on the television, and it's pretty much guaranteed to burn out every two or three years, and mine did." So I wanted to go and get this light bulb replaced. So of course, what do I do? Just like all of us, I went to Google and I searched for Samsung, whatever my model is, replacement lamp, replacement light bulb, maybe whatever it is. And up came this video in the search results that said something like how to replace your Samsung blah, blah, blah lamp. Oh, man, I, maybe I could do this. So I clicked on the video. And what you see there is just the guy with his blue gloves on, and you can see two simple uh, you know, screwdriver and pliers. The lamp is on the left. The little box is on the right. And in two minutes, he replaced this uh, light bulb. And of course, they have a link to the purchase page. So what did I do? I watched it, said, I can do that. I clicked on the link, and I bought my $200 light bulb from these guys. Being an internet marketer, I went back to see, what are they doing? And I discovered that they have hundreds of two, three, four-minute videos replacing, you know, Samsung, Panasonic, Sony, whatever. Their whole business is basically uh, replacement parts, and they set up evidently a little production line and just shot video after video and show people how easy it is to replace it themselves with links to their product. That's something you know people just don't think of, but here it is—a company you've never heard of. A little specialty company somewhere in the U.S. that is kicking butt with video content. So um, one thing you have to keep in mind, though, is you are trying to get found. So whether it's video, webinar, podcast, uh, image posts, all those examples I gave, you do have to optimize it. Links are still important. You want to build links to it if, it, if at all possible, either internally or ex externally. You want to make sure you have title tags uh, on all of this content that's critical with both Google and Bing. Um, your images, and we forget this on our own site sometimes, um, but image alt text, you know, and I'm listing this in order of importance that uh, there was a huge study done by SEOs, and SEOs agreed to that this is the priority in, in, uh, uh, for your optimization. So image alt text is really important evidently the third most important factor. So you need to make sure you take care of that if you have images in your content. H1, that's not to be confused with the title tag. This is your headline, so the actual headline in your uh, content or your text. Uh, you need to make sure you assign an H1 tag to it and only have one per page. Definitely want to have description meta tags. Um, uh, your URL structure is important. If you can get your keyword into your URL, that's best. Page load times have actually become really important, and we're now starting to see 
it, this was announced, I think, back in May, and we're now actually seeing people uh, demonstrating real uh, issues where uh, they sped up their page load times and their rankings went up. So you want to pay attention to that. And then kind of going back here, if you look at number two and number three, your title tagging, your description, most of you probably know this, but that's what shows up in your search res results as well. So you want to be aware of this when you're creating your title tags and your description tags, that it, that is your opportunity to sell someone on clicking on your link in the Google search results or Bing search results. And here's the different elements. I'm going to kind of speed through this, but you'll see that uh, the title tags up in the top, the blue of the of the uh, browser, the URL that I mentioned, uh, you want the, your keywords in your content, the H1 tag is circled there, the meta description, and this is where all of the elements appear. Um, and I'm going to kind of hammer this one just for a minute to give you some stats. Uh, in my opinion, you have to have a blog on your domain, not on a separate domain, but on your domain uh, for the five reasons listed to the right. It gives you a vehicle to post new content, whether it's video, image, text, whatever it might be. It allows for internal linking. You, you know, you can link from your blog post to the uh, related pages within your uh, site, as long as you don't abuse it. But the next three are the stats that just should be eye-opening. Uh, this is these three stats were provided by it says Hub Pages, but it's HubSpot. Sorry about that. By HubSpot, um, and uh, that is that uh, because you're producing new content in your blog. Uh, keeps the search engines coming back. The spider is going to return, and proof of that is that websites who have a blog have 434 percent more index pages. Four times as many pages are, are being indexed by Google for sites that have a blog. They'll have two times as many backlinks compared to sites that don't have a blog, and they'll get 55 percent more traffic compared to sites that don't have a blog. They really, really, in my opinion, need to focus on that. And I can tell you firsthand, vertical measures, we get a ton of traffic through our blog. And I think I made it in the 45 minutes. Um, so I know we're going to do some Q&A, and I'll let uh, Lise jump on the line in just a second. But let me give a little promo for vertical measures. Uh, we do have a Facebook page, uh, so you can follow us there or like us there anyway. We also have our own uh, LinkedIn group. You can go to LinkedIn and just search for vertical measures. Uh, we're there, and we'd be thrilled if you joined our group. We push information out through our LinkedIn uh, group as well. And uh, Twitter, of course, as I mentioned in the very beginning, uh, you can follow us at Vertical Measure, just singular. Uh, and we, uh, we do a lot of tweeting, so you can find us there. And at this point, I'll turn it over to Elise. Great, Arnie. And actually, amazingly, we don't have any questions for you. <laughs> Someone enter something right now. Um, but I think you can take that as a sign that you've really done your job well and um, your presentation was very clear and concise. Appreciate I'll just that. remind everyone uh, that our, this presentation will be posted later to be viewed at www.verticalmeasures.com forward slash webinars. Um, and um, mark your calendar for the next webinar, which is scheduled on November 11th and will be focused on social media, featuring, featuring our social media architect, Kayla Strong. And it still looks like we have no questions, so I think wow. we're all set. Now, are there still people on the phone? Or are you just there sure them? are. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, <laughs> well, uh, if there's no questions, we don't need to keep people waiting. And No, thanks so much. Great presentation, Arnie. Thank you. Thanks Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.